Hi guys, so at the end of February, start of March, my friend brought me round some frogspawn to raise. Now I did say to him, I didn't want any because I get too attached, but he insisted and he sort of brought some round in a bucket and was like, look, you're going to have to raise them. And that's what I did. <laughs> now this particular lot had been laid in a plant pot that was full of rain and it was very rapidly drying out, so they did need to be moved. And also his pond was pretty full of frog spawn already. So in today's video, I'm going to go through and guide you on how these little dots eventually turned into independent swimming machines. So to begin, when a mummy frog and a daddy frog love each other very much, they hug for a very long time. And then a huge jelly-like mass explodes out of the mummy's butt. And we are looking at the result of that exploding butt. Now, it wasn't too long until these dots started to look like tadpoles. Literally overnight, they went from looking like this to this. You can actually see the inner circle or the central yolk part of this egg. Now, at first, there's not really much to do. There's not a lot of room in there. But this tadpole decided it would spin for ages. <laughs> The tadpoles continued to grow, and a few of them did attempt to exit the frog spawn. They achieved this by occasionally wriggling around. Now, out of hundreds of tadpoles, usually only a few will survive, and beyond that, fewer will reach adulthood, hence why frogs lay so many. Unfortunately, these early bloomers weren't really ready to hatch out, and sadly, they didn't make it. But good things come to those who wait and a few tadpoles managed to hold on and stay in the frog spawn for a bit longer and they ended up hatching out about half a centimetre bigger than the early bloomers and that made a massive difference. Now I have to say, looking back, I think there are a few issues with the frog spawn itself. Firstly, it was very small for a whole batch of frog spawn. It was also laid in a very peculiar place. Quite a few of the tadpoles did die because they hatched out too early and having raised tadpoles in the past when I was like a child, I know tons used to hatch out so this was a little unusual and a few of the frog spawn remained as dots and then went grey and white and when I looked that up that can be due to poor fertilisation so we can safely assume that this batch wasn't great but we did get some survivors. Speaking of survivors, I decided to just keep two of the tadpoles, and there's a good reason for this. If they're overcrowded, especially if you're raising it, them in captivity, so not in a pond or anything, that can really damage their development and stunt their growth. So I only wanted a few, and I decided to have two because tadpoles can sometimes be sociable, so I wanted to at least have two, and so they had plenty of room to swim and develop in. Now, I decided to move them out of the glass jar they were in as eggs and move them into this tank. Now, the filter in the tank was far too harsh for them, so I created a mini waterfall with a few rocks from my garden. Now, the water is a mix of the original pond water and treated tap water, and since putting this tank together, I have had to do multiple water changes. I also added some curly water thyme, I believe that's what this plant is called, and hopefully this will add some oxygen in there, as well as introducing microflora and microfauna in there for them to eat. This plant was actually originally in a pond that I had, it was like an old sand pit that I turned into a pond, and that had plants in it, but we don't really get animals in there anymore, so I just took the plants out, introduced that to the tank, and it's been getting on very well ever since. Speaking of the microflora and microfauna in the tank, now the tadpoles can feast on them because they have tiny teeth, and they will use these teeth to grate along the plants and grate on decaying like leaves that I've added into the tank, and they'll turn it into some weird oxygenated particle soup. Also by this stage, they've lost their feathery gills as they have been covered over by skin. You may have seen the feathery gills in an earlier clip. And this sadly is where we have to end today's chapter on the development from egg to frog. Now it is April right now, and so I can definitely tell you after two months of having these frogs spawn, they now have back legs and they are ridiculously cute. 
So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video when we go through how they develop legs and hopefully how they turn into frogs. I can't tell you exactly when that video will be out because it is still literally developing in a tank right now but make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.